Greetings once again as we prepare to celebrate the Holy Eucharist on Sunday coming. The Holy Eucharist is also known as Holy Communion, Holy Mass, the Lord's Supper, a variety of names. And this coming Sunday is very exciting for us because it is it's the last Sunday after Pentecost, the Feast of Christ the King. And for us at the St. David's Church, it will also be Holy Confirmation. So we have nine children to be presented to the Bishop of Barbados for confirmation. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, who caused all Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that we may embrace and ever hold fast the best of hope of eternal life, which you have given us in our Savior Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. So as I mentioned, it is a very exciting weekend for us coming up here at St. David's. It is the last Sunday after Pentecost. And so that means that um, after this weekend, when we come to church again the following Sunday, we will be in the season of Advent, the first Sunday of Advent. Advent is a short season, uh, not very long, as we prepare to celebrate the birth of Christ, and we'll talk about that some more another time. Um, the Feast of Christ the King, of course, we pray that our Lord may be enthroned um, in our hearts, in our homes, in places of worship, in all places of human endeavor, and enterprise, within the business community, enthroned in our tourism product, um, enthroned in places where decisions are made on behalf of all of us, or Houses of Parliament, or Judiciary. We pray that our Lord and God will indeed be enthroned in the hearts, in the homes, and all places across our land, and in all places across the world, in order that we may have peace. For we must remember that the Lord of glory is indeed the King of peace. And so we pray that God Almighty, Son Jesus Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, may it fully be enthroned among us. And so this coming Sunday, it is the confirmation in the parish, as I mentioned, we will, be read, we will be using the readings for the feast day, the Feast of Christ the King. So we will be using readings from the book of Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, verses 9 to 10, and 13 to 14. We will be using a very familiar psalm that is normally used at confirmation, Psalm 27, verses 1 to 7. And our children have been repeating this hymn Every week, week by week, as we were going through the confirmation class from about February of this year. And the thing about the class this year is that it's primarily online. And then under the, the protocols for schools and so on, we started to meet together during the latter stages of the class. The epistle, or the second lesson, will come from the Revelation to John. John chapter 1, verses 4 to 8. And then the Gospel reading will be taken from the Gospel according to St. John, St. John's Gospel, chapter 18, in which there is this dialogue between Pontius Pilate and our Lord. And our Lord is making uh, the point that um, he was born for this purpose. He was born for this purpose. He, Pilate wants to know from him, are you the king of the Jews, and Jesus is saying to him, my kingship is not from this world. If my kingdom were from this world, my followers would fight to keep me from being handed over to you. Uh, so, so our Lord and Savior, we celebrate his kingship, but we realize that his kingship is not demonstrated the way in which leadership is so often done in the world. His kingship is not demonstrated by power and glory and pomp, but rather his kingship is demonstrated in humility, in sacrifice 
and in suffering. Thus, our Lord gives example to leaders across the world as to the way in which they ought to assist in directing the lives of those within their care and charge. So it is an exciting weekend. We ask you to pray for those candidates, those nine children who will be presented to the bishop, very keen, very zealous, some of our lovely young people, and we pray that they will have the opportunity to continue to serve their Lord and God and to work for Him in the world. There's nothing better than having our young people being involved and engaged in the life of the church. There are many persons whose life would have taken a different turn if only they had the opportunity to be involved in the life of the church. So let us make sure that our young people are actively involved. There are times when the church is referred to as an aging church. Our church ought not to be an aging church because there are many children and many young people who need to be exposed to the life of grace. So let us pray for these persons who will be presented as we celebrate the Feast of Christ the King. And we pray that Christ our Lord may fully be enthroned within them and aid in their development. So thanks very much for this opportunity to share this message with you. And it will seem appropriate before we end to close with the colleague for the Feast of Christ the King. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. So God bless you and may his grace remain upon us. Amen.